coaching with so far? Yeah, it's a, it was a fun day, long day, but you know, as I mentioned last night, you know, an opportunity to keep playing, and uh, obviously these guys took advantage of it. We get two quality starts on the mound today, and the bats come alive, and just good Louisville Cardinal baseball. So uh, proud of these guys, and look forward to getting an opportunity to compete again tomorrow. Riley, you set your career high in strikeouts early this year against Michigan and then reset it again today against them. What is it about their overall approach at the plate that bodes well for you at, on the mound? Uh, I couldn't really tell you, honestly. I don't know. I guess the, both those days, I guess I just felt my best. And obviously, I had my curveball working both times and helps having the changeup mix in there in, in between. So it's all in my A game. Cam, how big is it? Yesterday, you don't get the runs in the first inning or the second inning you had opportunities tonight at 7-0 after that. How big is that momentum for you guys? It's huge. You know, uh, putting a team like that away early is uh, really important. You know, Michigan's a really good ball club. Got great arms, great great hitters that come up to the plate. So, uh, you know, getting ahead and getting that momentum early is big time in these games. Kim, did you guys change? You struggled a lot with guys on base yesterday. Did you change anything, or, or was it just seeing the ball and hitting the ball today? Uh, you know, mentally I think we're just more relaxed. Um, you know, I think yesterday was, was just one of those games, you know, uh, me personally, you know, in the first inning and a couple other guys, you know, later in the game. But, uh, you know, today is just our offense. You know, that's that's how we play. That's how we hit. Uh, very explosive. And I think that showed today. And what's it mean for the guys out in the field, the hitters, when you see somebody like Riley throwing like he was today? It's awesome. You know, uh, we say hitting is contagious on the offensive side. But, you know, we can say that on the, you know, for the pitchers, too. If the guy's dealing, then it's so much easier to hit, you know. It's just so much more relaxed at the plate, knowing that you know these guys are shoving, and uh, yeah, like, like I said, just a lot more relaxed. Riley, on the flip side of it, when you go out there and it's 4-0, then you go out there and it's 7-0. How much easier does it make it for you, or make you kind of just be able to do what you want to do? Yeah, it takes it takes a lot of weight off your shoulders. Um, we preach that if you get ahead early, pound the ball in the strike zone. Don't give me free ones. Make them earn it. And if you do that, and you're usually set in a good position. Riley, how much did you look at that start as as pressure, or did you kind of not worry about, you know, this could have been the last game of the season? No, I don't think – I definitely didn't think that, and I don't think anybody on our team thought that. Um, Coach Mack's been preaching throughout the whole year that nobody else is better prepared, more prepared as a team. And I think we let everything that we've done in the past prepare us and put that behind us and just go out there and play our best. Do you think that overall mindset heading into today kind of helped with how, how much adversity you guys have faced over the course of the season? Yeah, I'd absolutely say that. Coach Mack, like I said, pretty much before every weekend series, before the regional and stuff like that, he keeps preaching. Like, we had to play in a snowstorm, bomb delay, and everything all above. And I think everybody's prepared and just keep the nerves low and play play well. Kim, in kind of in that regard, you guys have been playing playoff hockey, as Coach said, for for a while now. Your backs were against the wall today. Now, how do you come? How do you kind of respond after that? Now you have to win tomorrow. You know, to come out tomorrow night. The same way we did today. You know, tomorrow's just another day at the at the ballpark. Um, you know, I think if we come out how we did today tomorrow, then we're going to be in good shape. Uh, you know, pitchers got to throw strikes and get outs, and hitters got to do our thing at the plate. Anything else for these two? It, it came, you were. To go back to the first game, your home run in that game kind of let everybody breathe a little. Did you feel that? I mean, it was kind of like a, a it was 1-1 at the time, and, and it was kind of close. And then you hit that home run. It seemed like it kind of opened the, the floodgates a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you could say that. You know, I think that, uh, you know, one through nine, anybody can, you know, has the opportunity to do that, you know, open the open the floodgates, you know, for the lineup. But, uh, yeah, I guess you could say that that home run, you know, definitely pushed us in the right direction. But I think, you know, we were very comfortable the whole game. You know, when we started, even at the end there, I was just comfortable the whole time. Dan, what did you see from Riley early on? And, and, and it, it, he was just so dominant and kept them so off balance. I, I remember when he pitched against them last time, uh, they had told me, you know, they thought he was the best pitcher on our staff. Um, you know, maybe they struggle a little more at lefties than righties. Um, but, you know, that was fun to see as I, I told the in-game interview crew that, you know, there was a time where we had Poland and Phillips, man. We, we felt like we had a really good one-two punch. And um, 
but you know Riley just had a little setback with his health and I give our medical staff a lot of credit coach Williams a lot of credit cuz you know you you could be antsy man you want to bring them back and you, you know you got to win the Virginia Tech series and you're trying to win the Virginia series and it's like you know when are we getting Phillips back and and even in the ACC tournament we threw him one inning we just you know wanted to get him a starter routine and one inning to get him to this point where he could pitch in a you know a game seven type game um, and he responded so you know as a coach I'm just I'm really proud of of our support staff and Riley as well you know he had to work hard he had to, you got to be honest you got to communicate with how you're feeling and um, and he looked great today how much pressure do you think it took off of Riley to kind of pitch free and loose knowing that the offense puts up seven runs in the blink of an eye you know, it should but sometimes it'll backfire sometimes when you lose your edge you know sometimes it's not easy to pitch with a big lead you know because guys you know lose that focus it's, it's just not a given um, so whether it's you know, zero zero, or you know, we were able to put up some runs there early. Uh, as he said, he was on, and um, and like I said, it was just fun, fun to see him uh, get that start and, and and the success he had because there were parts during the year where he had that going, and you know, he had a tough patch like a lot of kids do, and um, but I remember it was frustrating that last month not having him because, you know, we were, you know, we we were going with Poland and and everybody else, and. Um, you know, again, I thought Carson, you know, shown his growth, you know, with the outing he gave us today. So, you know, freshman, you know, and a, and a sophomore to give us two really quality starts today. It's always, you know, for me, <laughs> looking for the future, um, I felt good about that. Yeah, I know both of, you, both of you will get some guys tomorrow who threw earlier in the weekend, but how much does it help you? Just you use five guys the whole day. You only have to use two in the second game. Yeah, I mean it's you know it's game seven for us all day. So you, you got to do what you got to do to win. So it's not you know we weren't saving anybody, holding anybody back. If you told Coach Williams you were available, then you were available. You had your spikes on and um, you had to be ready to go. And um, you know these Mondays are great memories for me. You know with with the 07 team, I remember Coach Williams. You know he lined them all up in the bullpen at Missouri. He said, give me what you got, and it's just fun when kids do that. And then in 19, when Detmers threw his no-hitter a few weeks ago, they reached out to me, and they wanted to hear some stories about Detmers. And I told them two stories. One, um, he pitched a 9 a.m. game against Japan uh, in Tokyo. It was 1-1, and he pitched that swing game. And I remember how good he was, um, and I was so proud of him. Uh, and the other story I told him was he pitched in this regional in 19, on a Saturday. And when you're available to pitch, you throw in the outfield, you put your spikes on, and you walk up to Coach Williams and you tell him you're available. And I remember Reed walking right by me. Coach Williams was standing there. He looked at Coach Williams and said, I'm ready. I want to pitch today. And I just felt when when you have guys that say that and do that, and then Bobby Miller, who pitched on Sunday, walked by and said, Coach, I'm ready today. I don't think either of them pitched, um, but just knowing that they were available, that they wanted the ball, it's, as a coach, it's a special moment because, again, it's all about playing for each other. It's really fun when guys do that, when it's just about their teammates. And we've done that a lot this year. It's been a fun group to coach. Michigan was talking about how they just need to flush today, you not worry about tomorrow. On the flip side, you know, you talk about not getting too high, not getting too low. What's your message to your team after you absolutely dominate somebody. Yeah, we say turn the page, you know, you know, don't get too high, don't get too low. And for us, it's again, it's it's another game seven for us. You know, it's it's, it's an elimination game. So I don't know how we don't keep our edge about us. And and, um, and this group has, has been good at doing that all year. Have you decided who you're going to start uh, tomorrow? And is the game going to start at six? Or is there talk of it going earlier? Yeah. I, um, the last I heard, it's they're leaning towards a noon game, you know, with weather. Um, and as much as I'd like a 6 o'clock game for our home crowd, you know, one thing I don't ever do, I don't ever, I don't ever jockey games for my benefit or, or, you know, for anything that I think gives me an advantage. If, if we have to play at noon for the weather, we play at noon. If they said you got to play at 9 a.m., we play at 9 a.m. I mean, we'll, we'll play whenever they say play um, because we respect the game way too much in our opponent. So we have to play when we have an open window and 
and I would imagine the NCA is going to want that. Um, but I don't know if we've got final confirmation. But that's what we're preparing for. Are you th- that's a good question. You know, is that, that's one of those just walk up to the office and, um, you know, and, and a couple of years ago it was, you know, Nick Bennett walked into our office on Sunday. He, he started the Friday game and he said, Coach, I want the ball. And then Monday morning he walked into our office. He said, Coach, I want the ball. And, um, again, that was the domino effect. You know, Nick Bennett did that and, and Detmers and Miller and all those guys. And I think Nick threw two innings. Um, and so I'm sure Coach Williams has so much experience with this. And this pitching staff really, like I said earlier, nothing's going to phase this pitching staff. And it really doesn't phase our team because we've been doing this all year. I mean, we, we've been you know, relying on all these guys in the bullpen. So I don't think anything will be surprising tomorrow. And, um, but it, it, you know, it has to be all hands on deck and, and just everybody just kind of give us what you got. Dan, you talking about the pitchers, not to leave Webster out in the four innings. I mean, obviously he's got a, a lead, but for him to come out and, and do that, can you just kind of speak to, to, to that performance? As you said, I mean, yeah, we to use, what, five pitchers today, 18 innings against Oregon and Michigan. I mean, those lineups and those hitters, I mean, how good they are that, um, yeah, I don't I don't care what the score is. I mean, you, you got to throw strikes, and, and you're facing good hitters. So that was huge for Webby. Webby. You know, one thing you love about him, man, it's you know what you're going to get. You know, he's my, uh, I call him organic milk. Um, you know, that stuff lasts in the fridge forever. <laughs> like, really, you just, you, you know, when you pull that carton out of the fridge and you pour it into a glass, man, it's still going to be, it's fresh. Like, I just, you know, you know what you're getting. So I think with Webby, man, you know what you're getting. I mean, he's always going to be aggressive in the strike zone. You might hit him some days, but, man, he's, He's he's been very valuable for this pitching staff, so that was huge today. Kind of building off of that, by and large in this regional, the bullpen has done pretty good compared to how they were kind of streaky during the regular season. I'm sure that's probably got to give you confidence that you feel like whoever you throw out tomorrow, they're going to be able to get outs for you. Yeah, and I think the message has been to you don't have to be perfect. I mean, you don't, you know, it's okay to give up a run. It's okay, just you know, try. <laughs> it's you know, you're facing good hitters, good lineups. You guys are going to get a hold of some balls. You know, just it's not about being perfect, and, and it's okay if you give up a run or two. Let's just let's avoid the big crooked number, right? And uh, let's keep it down, and and let's you know offensively if, if we can get it going early today. To me, the the big emphasis, if you evaluate what happened today offensively, was just guys picked each other up. We still had not so great at bats when guys had an opportunity to get a run in. But I always say. The on-deck guy, your job is to pick the guy up. So if the guy in front of you doesn't get the job done, then you step in the batter's box and you get it done and you pick him up. And I think that was the theme today. Um, we had a lot of those two-out hits. When the guy with one out didn't get the run in, the guy with two outs got it in. And it's huge. I mean, two-out hits is – I mean, it's huge in baseball, but especially in the postseason. Dan, you talk a lot about, like, positive energy and reinforcement in terms of this team battling adversity throughout the year. When you enter a day like today, did, did they kind of show you just the similar signs that they've showed this year in terms of responding to those situations to show you they, they could do this today? Yeah, you, you, we talk a lot about faith. You know, your faith has to have faith. And um, you got to trust your ability and you got to trust your teammates. So um, and it was more about you got to be mature. You got to be professional. You get your butt kicked in this game. There's a reason it's double elimination. I mean, in baseball, anybody can beat anybody. So to, to have one game eliminate you is really not, not true baseball. So you, you got to be able to, you know, it's not always going to be easy. You got to embrace the challenges. And as Riley said, we, we've embraced them all year. It's a part of life. You know, we, we have our sayings. We eat obstacles for breakfast. And um, the curveballs of life are, are, are going to happen. So just embrace them. Show your toughness, your maturity. Be professional. And... And as I said yesterday, I don't know how you're not excited to show up today when 250 teams weren't able to put the cleats on and the uniform on and be together. And so, you know, for us, man, we show up early, we breakfast early, hitters meetings, and we go on. And, I mean, these guys love being together. And so we get an opportunity to do it again early tomorrow morning. All right, we're good. Thanks, everyone.